What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Scares. Today we're continuing on our Paranormal Activity Marathon of Films with the official spin-off, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. This is my 500th review on my channel. Now, I remember when news of this movie came out. There was consistently a new movie in this franchise every single year because it didn't really take much to make one. But one year, they were like, guess what? Paranormal Activity 5 won't even come out for in the next three years, but you will still be able to enjoy Paranormal Activity goodness in the meantime because we're making a spinoff, y'all! I didn't even know what to make of a spinoff. Heck, I don't even really know what to make of a number of actual sequels to found footage because that doesn't really make that much logical sense. And now they want to spin off that? Truthfully, my original score for this movie was abysmal, but thankfully, I could say that has changed a bit, and I'll try to explain why in a second. But whenever I lose Scunner for a film, I'm happy. Let's get cracking. This review was brought to you by the word of the day, Scunner. An irrational dislike, aka loathing. Paranormal Activity The Mark Ones focuses on a Latino family as they document the strange phenomena that seems to exist in their apartment complex. Jesse particularly lets his curiosity gain the better of him, and he breaks into the home of an old woman who had just died. He does this because there are those that claim that she was a bruja, a witch that is into some really weird stuff. But after he breaks into her apartment, he begins exhibiting weird symptoms. When I first saw and I reviewed this film, I was left disappointed because the one thing that remains true to this day is just the mere fact that wherever the series began is nowhere to be seen anymore. And instead of being horror, this film actually leaned quite heavily into science fiction. But upon rewatch, I gotta say that there are aspects to that concept that I liked. Because I've already seen the movie, I didn't have to have those expectations anymore. Instead, I could just try to enjoy it as its own thing, and truthfully, that's mostly what I did. In my review of the last movie, I gave off a spoiler warning because I couldn't realistically review it without spoiling some major points. The same goes for this movie. So if you haven't seen it and you don't want to be spoiled, go ahead and watch the movie first, then come back. If you don't care to be spoiled, then carry on. Okay, so there are two aspects of this film that are noteworthy enough to mention. First of all, the marked ones referred to in the title are those people that are bitten by a demonic force. If they're bitten, they start showing weird signs, they start doing weird things. Even Katie was bitten in the first movie, so I guess she was one of the marked. In this movie particularly, Jesse gets bitten and the signs he begins exhibiting are superpowers. It's not as stereotypical as maybe flight or x-ray vision, and he doesn't go flying around the city like they do in Chronicle, but there is super strength and in general kind of an impervious, invincible quality that he has. I think in general the demon haunting these people is acting as sort of a guardian angel because it needs Jesse later on in the movie and can't have him hurt. And I think that makes some kind of sense, but it is pretty stupid and it has me rolling my eyes but it is fun to watch and it did offer the franchise a glimmer of doing something different than what has already been done a thousand times before in the series so i guess if they're gonna continue the series you might as well change it up go all out and that's what they do throughout the movie there are hints as to the possibility through witchcraft of time travel yes time travel uh so we're connecting chronicle and Project Almanac into one with this movie because at the very end of this film, time travel does occur, sending Hector, one of Jesse's best friends, back in time into the living room of Mika and Katie during the events of Paranormal Activity 1. What's so awesome about this scene is that it was something that could have technically happened in the first Paranormal Activity without you knowing it. At the end of that, Katie, acting possessed, walks down the stairs, and in the perspective of that first film, you don't see anything. You just hear Katie scream out for Mika. Mika comes running down the stairs without the camera. Supposedly, he gets killed, and that's the end of the first movie. This one offers a different perspective. What Katie was yelling for Mika about was the fact that she found Hector standing in the middle of her kitchen. And so you get to see what actually happened from this perspective. Honestly, that's kind of cool if you think about it. There's parts of this that I love because I'm a sucker for time travel. I'm also a sucker for when time travel makes the claim that this could have technically happened from the very beginning because in a lot of ways it fits lastly i just want to say that apart from the science fiction elements i did jump in this movie a few times because it wasn't always obvious when they were going to go for a jump scare it had good tension building the scares were somewhat temporary but they worked for what they were the setting of the film also seemed to make a lot more sense with latinos in the core roles because whether it's true or not they're often depicted as very spiritual people that believe in otherworldly things and if this were to happen in real life it's often that community that i think would be among the first 
to take notice. So I actually really liked the setting, I liked the characters, all of which felt relatively genuine. But at the same time, the biggest downfall of the film is the fact that it's found footage, right? I can't even think to who would be the person who found this found footage. In that aspect, it feels much more like a production than anything else. But let's go ahead and break down my final score for a second. From an unbiased technical level, this is once again business as usual. Most of the things that happen from a technical perspective aren't going to impress you. Certain things will at certain times, but a majority of the film just does its thing as usual. Also, some people will call the whole thing over convoluted, and that might be true. So that'll affect the score, which is 66%. And as far as the bias score goes, I actually had a fair enough time with it. Enough, in fact, to give the bias score 80%. And when we average these two scores together, we come to the final rating of 73%. 73 out of 100 possible stars or a C letter grade. This is a much higher score than what I gave it the first time that I saw it, which was 44% if, if I'm if i right. To put it nicely, I was disappointed when I first saw it because I had just so many different expectations going in. But upon rewatch, there were things that I thought worked out for the better. But let's hear your thoughts on Paranormal Activity, the marked ones, in the comment section down below. Do you think that it's a good addition to the found footage franchise, or would you rather it just stick to the idea that less is more, and never made more than maybe a couple of movies? As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this review, because there's always more like it coming out each and every single day. Hit the subscribe button and bell to be notified when I come out with my review for Paranormal Activity. Activity, the ghost dimension. And until then, guys, peace out. Dave examines movies. We just watch for fun. Davey is the expert. He is the number one critic that I go to when I need a movie pick. Thanks for joining up with us. We 